Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome to my channel and to day two of the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. If you missed day one and you're interested, go in my description and there's a link to Justine Hovey's blog explaining all of the information about the hop. The Save the Crafty YouTuber hop was put together to celebrate card making tutorial videos and card makers across YouTube. These are very talented artists that share their talent and advice and tips and it's meant to give a little boost and help you find some inspiration and maybe your next favorite YouTuber. There's tons of prizes on this hop. I myself am giving away a $25 gift certificate to Sweet Stamp Shop and a small Catherine Pooler ink bundle. So be sure to comment to win and on all the videos, there's lots of prizes to be given away. Again, as I mentioned, this is day two of five of this hop. So come back, comment, and you may win yourself some prizes. Let's go ahead and get started on my video for the day. I am using the Flying Squirrel stamp set from Sweet Stamp Shop. This is a brand new stamp set, just came out in their October release. It is so cute, so fun to color in, and I'm going to be masking off this leaf pile here to make a greater, much bigger leaf pile. I love doing this for scenes and cards because I think it just gives a lot more interest. I will be using a full sticky back post-it to stamp my image onto like you see here and I've cut it out as close as possible to the lines. That way when I mask it off there's no margin between the stamps and it just looks like they all go right in together. I'm using some blue painters tape to first mask off a few of these stray leaves that you see here. I don't want those inside the uh, first few stamps that I do because they are sort of by themselves and it would take a very long time for me to cut each individual stamp out. So I'm just going ahead and putting some painter's tape over them before I ink up the stamp. And then before I stamp it, I will just remove those pieces of blue tape and it won't stamp onto the paper because they never got inked up. But it is very important to remember to remove that blue painter's tape before you stamp. I have made that mistake a few times. It's just easy to forget when you're going through. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because this is a Copic safe ink. I do also want to mention that Midnight by Catherine Pooler is an archival ink and is also safe for alcohol markers and watercolors as well. So it's really handy to have and that is part of my ink bundle that I'm giving away. So as you can see, I went ahead and stamped the first leaf pile stamp, and I'm going to take the first mask off, and I'll just make sure that I get this as close and as perfect as I can on the lines. It takes a little while and a little bit of adjusting, but it's so worth it when you do it right and you don't have to do any adjusting later or any filling in. It's really nice when you can just go ahead and stamp right over it and get the look that you're going for. So I've gone ahead and stamped and masked that off, and I'm going to repeat this process a few times. I'm going to speed this up quite a bit so that you don't have to see all the repetitiveness of it, but I mask those leaves off every time. It is a little time consuming, but it really is worth it at the end. And each time I stamp, I put a mask over it. And what the mask does is makes it so that the lines that you stamp don't go through that stamped image. So normally if you stamp something and then stamped right on top of it, you would see those lines going right through the first stamped image. But because you've masked it off, the lines won't show. So it will appear as if your masked image is in front of the second stamped image, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, give it a minute and when we pull all the masking off, you'll see at the very end what I'm talking about. It just gives a lot of dimension to the card and it allows you to create a scene whereas normally it would just be one stamp. Now you can stamp lots of things and create a scene with dimension and it really is a really easy technique and one of my favorites to use for stamping. There's a lot of different stamping or masking papers, I'm sorry, that you can use. Inka Dinka Doo has a really great masking paper as well, and I sometimes use repositionable sticker paper, but I find that the full sticky back post-it notes work really good when you have a small image like this. For my final image stamped, which is going to serve as the very top of my leaf pile, I'm going to go ahead and ink up 
all of the leaves on the stamp, even the little stray leaves, because I won't be masking this off. This is actually going to be my final stamp and it's going to look nice just to make it look like a few of the leaves are blowing around. And here is where you get to see all of your hard work pay off, pulling off that masking and seeing what you created. Here we created this really big leaf pile off of just one stamp, and I think that's very, very cool. In just a minute here, you're going to see that I went ahead and ink blended Something Borrowed by Katherine Pooler as my sky, and I went in with some Copic markers to color in all of my leaves. Sandy Alnock, who is also a sponsor of this hop and kit and cloud are both have really amazing coloring classes that are available and i'll link those in the description as well i hope that you have enjoyed seeing how i created this scene by some simple masking techniques again please be sure to comment on the video for your chance to win some great prizes and continue on at the link to the next video in my description and so on and so on Thank you so much for stopping by today, and I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.